this new study that uh, I believe Data for Progress and Revolving Door Project put out, basically polling Americans about their feelings about corporate crime and whether or not it's a problem, whether or not they believe that the government should be cracking down on it. And overwhelmingly, the answers all pointed to, yeah, do that. Um, what did you, what's sort of the most startling part of that report and why did you all, why did you all put that together? Yeah, um, so two really great questions. First again, thanks for having me on. Um, so this is all part of uh, a project that we're doing, which we're calling the Corporate Crackdown Project. Basically taking a step back and saying, okay, we're one year into the Biden administration. Uh, I think we can safely say things are not exactly going great. Uh, I think we can pretty safely say that, uh, you know, any sorts of high hopes that like people across the across the spectrum really, I mean, certainly on the left, but also really a lot of just like, you know, average centrist supporters or, or people who voted for Joe Biden uh, are feeling a little bit disappointed um, and needing to sort of like take a step back and ask ourselves, okay, what has Biden not really done that he should be doing in order to try to turn his ship around? Uh, and also specifically, what are things like, you know, within the stuff that even he accepts that he can do, uh, as you alluded to earlier, and as, uh, you know, we have been screaming from day one, uh, the one of the biggest things is Biden can cancel student debt uh, with just a couple of signatures. Uh, yes. There's enormous that, uh, amounts that he can do on climate change, on a broad range of different issues through existing executive powers. In many cases, he doesn't uh, believe that those things are legal or is sort of like dodging the question. But even on things that Biden agrees he can do, uh, what isn't he doing? Mm -hmm. uh, now, a large amount of the executive branch of the federal government is basically built to police corporate crime. It's basically built to uh, police corporate activity uh, and rebalance things when inevitably big business tries to screw over little people. Uh, now, we know that that isn't really what the executive branch has done for at least 40 years, 50 years, however you want to start the beginning of the neoliberal era. Uh, but Biden has, like, you know, put out a lot of rhetoric and put out a lot of like messaging about uh, how he wants to shift that around. So sort of like, mm -hmm. why isn't he doing it? Mm -hmm. So with that study with Data for Progress in particular, we first asked, okay, well, is this popular in the first place? Is this something which Biden should even want to do just in the pure politics of it? And the answer is overwhelmingly, oh my God, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of our biggest findings was that this enjoys like crazy amounts of support, not just on the left, not just in the center, but even among like registered Republicans. Something like 66% of Republicans said, yeah, I absolutely want the government to fund more uh, parts of federal agencies which crack down on corporate crime. You have Republicans admitting that they want to pay more taxes or they want to uh, like you know increase funding for government services if it's in service of bringing the biggest actors down and if it's and if it's in service of trying to rebalance this economy a little bit more. So yeah. our first finding here was just, yeah, if you have any questions, Joe Biden, about whether this is good politics, this is like crazy good politics. Why aren't you doing this? Yeah. Can I ask you to define a little bit more when you say corporate crime? You know, there's always the um actually guy who's like, well, it's all legal. So, you know, they should be doing it because you, you know, and like on and on and on and on. But what what kinds of things are you talking about? Well, first of all, uh, an enormous amount of what that um actually guy says is legal uh, is only because we have chosen not to enforce certain parts of certain statutes. So a lot of that technically is illegal, but it's just been a little like, oh, well, look the other way kind of a thing. Uh a lot of what we're talking about as far as corporate crime would include things like massive securities fraud, would include mm. things like illegal pollution of, in many cases, communities of color, poor communities, and so on, which is widespread across the entire country. Uh, you would have antitrust violations, illegal mergers, illegal acquisitions, and that kind of thing. You would have massive labor violations. Joe Biden very much wants to be seen as a pro-labor president. There's also ways that you can just use existing statutes and sort of retool the way you're uh, using them or interpreting them in order to build a very different kind of a government. So mm. like uh, my favorite example of this is that there's a part of the Department of Labor that was set up during uh, the first Red Scare that is basically there to try to make sure that there aren't any communists in unions. That is obviously absurd and terrible and that should not be a thing that exists. Yeah, you want However, communists in unions. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> 
but the the same powers, the, the same statute that created that part of the Department of Labor, you can use that exact same thing to basically completely hamstring uh, the like anti-union consultant industry, the, uh, the people yeah. who companies call up when someone is trying to organize the union. In this case, cough cough Starbucks. Mm. Uh, you know, um, Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, like the, the exact same sort of statutes that are basically built to say, like, you know, these elections should be fair. They shouldn't be influenced by outside actors. Hey, look, who's an outside actor? It's this guy who was hired just to keep you from organizing a union. All of these would be ways of reorganizing the executive branch in order to promote, like, you know, a, a vision that we are fighting for the little guy. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Because I, I'm, on this show, I feel liberated that I get to be the not knowing person and, and <laughs> Francesca and you can be the smart people. What is, so I have a question there. There, California has a lawsuit against Elon Musk right now and, and Tesla for uh, that. That's discrimination, uh, racial discrimination. Uh, is that part of uh, corporate crime? And also this New York pay transparency law that just got passed. If people are not disclosing what they're paying or they're hiding that, is that part of this as well? Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm more familiar with the Elon Musk lawsuit, so I'll take that first. Uh, that is absolute like those kinds of racial discrimination cases, racial discrimination, like EEOC stuff, that absolutely falls into what we're talking about here. And that actually gets at one of the other big problems here, which is that when you have like state level actors or when you have like, you know, people coming together in order to bring a lawsuit, like a class action kind of a thing. Um, so something that isn't the federal government cracking down, but it's still like, you know, uh, people trying to bring these things to account. There's a mm -hmm. lot that the federal government could do to basically just sort of co-endorse some of those actions or to uh, like uh, file amicus briefs, that kind of a thing, in order to assist this kind of an action. Uh, first of all, that's going to help them win the case because, you know, government lawyers are good lawyers. Uh, but moreover, again, like just on the pure politics of it, this, this kind of thing would be the Biden administration making a point of saying, yeah, we think it's really fucked up that Elon Musk is like, you know, running this like, you know, basically segregated uh, system at the fucking Tesla factory. Yeah. Um, and like, and we are going to do something about that. That's good yeah. politics. That's good policy. That's like, you know, just something good that Biden can be doing that he isn't for no reason. Yeah. I, you know, I, I read this and I, I'm, I was really struck actually by the number of Republicans that agreed, um, that corporate crime is a problem and that sort of elitists, um, are having their way on the working people uh, and that the government mostly looks out for the rich. So this is part of that study. The vast majority of voters believe that the government puts their interests of corporations and the rich above their own. And Republicans agreed by 77 percent. And that's huge. And it is part of, again, the way that Yes, racism, but we have to tap into and understand that that fake populism that Trump ran on and Trump governed with um, and still utilizes and the right still utilizes today, that that is incredibly moving. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.